Hello and welcome to Cabot Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm talking about the crossbow turret that I made for the game Atlas Empires. This will be a shortened down version, I keep most of the polygon modelling in but some of the painting I've already got lots of tutorials so I've cut that down a fair bit. If you want to see other tutorials I've got a long playlist of detailed painting tutorials and I've also got a playlist for the other Atlas Empires models that I've been making. So make sure you look out for the cards in the corner and the links in the description for those. And throughout this video I'll be giving tips and tricks about how I did certain things and tidied up certain aspects and so forth. If you do have any specific questions then I can do videos about those so do ask in the comments below. So I'll show you a bit of the box modeling here. It's very simplistic, very simple and you can see it's just very basic shapes and moving them around. I'm using the proportional edit tool here to move them as a block and then just getting the rough shape and making sure you're happy. And it's very simplistic because it's all the painting that does the work. So you don't really need to bevel too many edges. You can see I'm beveling a couple here uh, just to give it that uh, silhouette that's quite nice. It can be quite tough sometimes when you're looking at the edges and they're really sharp and you're trying to add the sort of bevel when you're painting and you do that through your highlights and your shadows but if you've got a really sharp edge then it can be tough so occasionally on those very hard edges where there's an obvious big edge you need to bevel it but you can see as it gets smaller and thinner in the crossbow I don't bother beveling the edges. Hopefully that makes sense. You can see for most of it though that I haven't beveled that many edges and it's all very simplistic shapes, very obvious and you can do this with uh, basic primitives almost. The main thing is to keep it low poly. You can see here for things like the spear uh, that I'm doing a very basic shape but I'm using the mirror and that's really important because I need to try and save texture space. When you use a mirror modifier it will duplicate the UV space so they'll be using exactly the same UVs therefore when you paint the top it will paint the bottom as well and that is really important for me in this particular project because I've only got 512 by 512 textures to work with so I'm always thinking about that texture space and where I can duplicate things I will. Obviously you've got to think about the polygon size and count as well so I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible and let the painting do the work but that's not actually quite as important as the texture space because that is really small for these models. You can also see the technique I'm using here just using the knife tool and cutting into the object and extruding it for some stones. Notice I don't make every single stone, I'm going to paint most of them but I want a few jutting out to look like they're sort of higgledy piggledy and uh, give it that sort of organic feel as if it's real life rather than computer made if that makes sense. So all those sort of hard edges and very rigid straight lines you've got to try and avoid to give it a natural looking feel. And you can see you just triangulate afterwards and that fills in the polygons for you. Occasionally you need to tidy some of those up, uh, just moving the triangles around a bit because it triangulates in a weird way, but nothing too major and that's fairly straightforward as well. You can see also that I'm using linked duplicates, so I use uh, Alt D instead of Shift D and the linked duplicate means that it will share the same texture space once again because it shares the same qualities as the original. And that's very important for my workflow because it's almost a modular approach to building these things. So once you paint one little bit, it will repeat across all your models. It does make it much faster for texturing, but it's also to save the texture space, and that's the most important thing. Obviously in the underside of your models you don't need any faces so I always delete those and I try and delete any inside faces as well. Occasionally I miss a couple and they did come back to me with a model recently saying there was too many inside faces here so I just went in and deleted all the ones that I missed. So you can see in this section that I'm making a sort of door to jut out of the front and I just overlap the old model. And you can see the sort of box model approach that I'm doing here, very simplistic and very straightforward just extruding and pulling things out uh, but it does overlap the rest of the model and uh, if I was making this model individually I wouldn't have it overlap like that but because it's a modular approach you don't really have to worry you just go in and find the faces that are hidden and you just delete them afterwards so that sort of modular approach is all important and you can see I'm saving texture space there by making sure that one face doesn't overlap the other one too much it's not particularly important because it doesn't increase your polygon count, uh, but it is important for the texture space. And for things like doors that you're not going to see the sides, you use a plane instead of a cube. All these things of course are fairly obvious really, but it's strange sometimes when you're modeling you forget and then you end up adding extra faces where you don't need them. 
Uh, it's always useful as well to cut up your object for painting, uh, so I try and separate it a bit. And you can join it together later. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about, again, the edges overlapping and things. Uh, but it is much easier to paint something when it's uh, not connected to the rest of the model, just because you can isolate the faces that bit quicker. You can isolate faces anyway when you're painting, so it's not a problem if they are joined together. It's just a bit quicker if you just quickly select that object and paint it and fill it in and that sort of thing. So you can see for the door, I made sure I mirrored that. It's quite a tough one at times because if something's lower down, you don't generally want it to have a darker shade than if it's higher up, as if the sun's hitting the object from the top and it gives it that sense of depth and the illusion of depth anyway. So sometimes mirroring things from top to bottom doesn't really work as well. For example, the spear, the underside should be in shadow and the top side should be lighter, of course. So although I have mirrored it, because it's a fairly small object, I can get away with it, but really it should have two separate texture spaces for top and bottom, uh, so different UVs, so that I can give the underside a bit of a darker quality and therefore give it that feeling of depth. So I've gone up to uh, 15 times speed for this last bit because it's very much uh, the same techniques and things that you've seen before. Uh, generally I was about, what is it, 13 times I think. So that should give you some idea about how long it's taking me. Basically for this set it took about a day and uh, the 10 model sets they take about two days just for the modeling. It probably seems quite slow but there is a lot of getting reference images and just thinking about how I'm going to make the shape, also how I'm going to link the modules together and which bits I'm going to duplicate and which bits I'm not. So it does take a fair bit of time. There is the unwrapping process in that as well. So I've skipped over to the painting aspect, but I wanted to show this part here. I'd made a mistake, so I'd unwrapped my model, but I'd forgot to include this bit here. So I have to re-unwrap it and find a bit of texture space to put it in. So it can be a real pain when you miss a spot, uh, especially with this modular approach. You think you've got them all and you think they're all in, but this one wasn't unwrapped properly. Uh, so because I forgot to do it so I had to go in and sort of re-unwrap it as you can see me doing here and then I have to select them all find a nice texture space that's empty which is one reason I actually quite like uh, it when it gives me lots of extra space in the UVs because you can get things like pack master and all these um, add-ons I can't remember exactly what they're called and they pack them really tightly but if I make an error then I have to re-unwrap bake all my textures across and with a modular approach it takes ages because they're not all joined together. It's just an absolute nightmare. So having that tiny bits of space is very helpful. Uh, so it's a bit wasteful, uh, but it's important for this sort of workflow because it just gets so overly complicated with all the different uh, modules that you've got. So you can see the same techniques as usual, darker at the bottom, lighter at the top, making sure you brighten your highlights or the edges I should say and then fill in your crevices and shadows. So it's all very straightforward in terms of the techniques. Obviously it takes a bit of practice to get it looking nice and realistic uh, but it's quite good fun. I do like the painting aspect, it's really enjoyable. I'm skipping through some of these bits but you can see here I'm just highlighting the rim of this circle and you can see how the underside is more shaded than the top side. And also you can probably see how I was switching between the principled BSDF and uh, the emission shader, because the emission shader is actually what it's going to look like. It's uh, completely flat with no shading. Uh, whereas the principled BSDF, I can see the corners and that's really helpful. I included this bit as well, the sort of painting of the brick. It's slightly different shape, so I thought that'd be slightly interesting. And there's a sort of highlight that I wanna uh, pick out a bit later on. You can see I'm just going around with the highlights and the crevices again with light brushes and dark brushes, as always. And in the crevices there, you can really see how much darker it is, but it seems to work in the end uh, with the right amount of shade. And you can see my beveled edges, I'm sort of highlighting that a bit sharper as well. And here's a tiny little divot or dink in the stone. And you can see how that's repeated all the way around because it's a uh, mirrored texture and it's mirrored across. Uh, so you've got to watch out when you're adding details if you've got a mirrored mesh. But I think I just about got away with it here, so I'm, I think that's okay anyway. You may have also noticed that I use the color brush, the sort of blending mode of the brush. And you can just go in and fill it in with a color to sort of match up um, all your models and make sure 
that uh, they're linking with the concept art and that sort of thing. So uh, once you've painted all that detail, you don't want to have to go over it again with a color. You just use the color blend mode, which is nice and easy. And here you can see, again, highlighting the edges. I'm in the principled BSDF mode, and then I switch back to that flat color with the emission. And that's using the Node Wrangler. I've talked about that a fair bit already in other episodes. Uh, do remember to check out those playlists. Uh, they can be really helpful for all these tips that I'm kind of jumping through really quickly here. And again, some of these uh, tiny sort of dinks and uh, details you've got to be careful of when you're mirroring. It's all right if you don't see, for example, this bit on the brick on the side here, there's a little dink, uh, but you don't notice it at the same time as the other side because you don't see them together because they're round the corner, as it were. But if they were both on the front mirrored across, you'd see an obvious mirror. So there we have it, the crossbow turret. Hopefully you're enjoying this series. Do check out the other episodes. And if you're interested in more detailed tutorials, uh, then do check out that painting playlist, which is all about learning texture painting in Blender 2.8. If you have any thoughts, particularly any questions, then do comment below and I'll get back to you and maybe do another video based on those. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.